guys, Mr. Klein here with our second lesson of our chapter on the periodic table. Yes, we will be talking about the periodic table, and I'm pretty sure you're wondering why on earth is there this crazy dude with crazy hair and a big long beard in the video. Well, I'm glad you asked, so let's go ahead and get started. This guy is Dmitri Mendeleev, and without him, we wouldn't have the periodic table because he's kind of the guy who invented it. And so let's go ahead and let's get into a little bit of a science history lesson, learning how the periodic table was invented before we get into what it contains. So in the 1860s, scientists had been working on organizing atoms for almost 200 years. They figured that there was, if you could organize them, you could understand them better. And a Russian scientist by the name of Dmitry Mendeleev was writing a science textbook for his chemistry students, and he wanted an easy way to organize the different elements. See, so even all the way back then in the 1860s, scientists and teachers were trying to figure out ways to get students to understand things better. Some people invented your periodic table, other people create bad videos and post them on the internet. <clears throat> anyway, he created a set of cards with all the known elements with their names, their atomic masses, and their properties. And so what he did was he tried several times to find a pattern uh, with these atoms that he could arrange the elements in until he noticed that when he arranged it by atomic mass, elements with similar properties started to appear and repeat themselves. As he added more cards to the table, he began to notice gaps that Dmitry Mendeleev guessed, well, you know what? I bet there's elements that we haven't quite discovered yet, and I bet they fill in these holes. Over time, these gaps were actually filled with these undiscovered elements, and they had the properties that Mendeleev actually predicted. And so this grouping of cards and stuff became known as the periodic table. And the periodic table today is organized by the atomic number of an atom, or the number of protons in an atom. So when you look at an element, you see a number, which we'll talk about later, the atomic number, that's simply the number of protons in the atom. So the periodic tables are organized by atomic number. The atomic number, the periodic table, increases from left to right and top to bottom uh, within each row and top to bottom within each column. So this is what the periodic table actually looks like. It has a kind of odd shape. It's not quite a rectangle, and there's a reason for this. Uh, and we'll get into what exactly all of these elements are in the next lesson. So in this lesson today, what we're actually going to talk about is just kind of how the periodic table is organized and kind of how it works. So let's go ahead and let's look at this. So rows of the periodic table are called periods. Okay, They're called periods. In each period, elements increase across the row. They increase by atomic number. The number of elements in a row actually depends on the number of electrons in their outer shell. Uh, if you remember from the previous lesson, the electron cloud, that energy level, the top energy level, the number of uh, the way they, the number of them down the road depend on the number of electrons in that outer energy level. And on the modern periodic table, there are seven periods. So whenever we look at the periodic table, the periods go across. Okay, S some start out with two. Next one has eight, and then the next one also has eight, and then it increases from there. Now, if you notice, there's two rows kind of down at the bottom. Uh, those are actually uh, involved with rows six and seven, period six and seven, the lanthanides and actinides, and we'll talk about those in the next lesson in particular because there are particular types of metals. Okay, so periods go across. Now, if you notice, vertically, they're organized in what we call groups. Columns of the periodic table are called groups. In each group, elements all have similar properties, and they usually increase in intensity. As of right now, there are 18 groups in the periodic table. So we look at the periodic table. Vertically are the groups. So there's 18 going across. And in each of them, you have similar properties going in each one. So in group 1, 2, so on and so forth through group 18, they have similar properties. So... You might be asking yourself, well, Mr. Klein, what do all those boxes, they have a whole bunch of information. What exactly do they contain? Well, I'm glad you asked. When you look, you'll usually find a lot of information. Most periodic table entries have at least four parts to them, and that's what we'll look at. Uh, so the first part is the number at the top. That's the atomic number, or the number of protons it has. So when we look at your average periodic table entry, usually up in the corner you'll see a number, uh, and that's the atomic number. Okay, so we're looking at nitrogen. We know that nitrogen's atomic number is seven and it has seven protons. The next thing is the chemical symbol of the element, which consists of one or two letters. The ones with three are actually undiscovered elements. We kind of have like a name. We haven't given them an official name because uh, they might have been created artificially. And so their name usually comes from the element's name in English or another language. Okay, 
So N is the chemical symbol of nitrogen. Okay, so seven is the atomic number. N is its chemical symbol. After that is, of course, the name. Okay, that's the name of it. Usually it's in English, or if it's in an, another language, its name will be there. So uh, the atomic number of seven with a chemical symbol of N has the element name of nitrogen. Finally, we have at the bottom the average atomic mass of all known isotopes and atomic mass units. If you remember, uh, an isotope is an atom with a different number of neutrons than protons, usually more. So the average atomic mass of all known isotopes of nitrogen is 14.01. In other words, most of them are, have, are pretty balanced in that they have seven protons and seven neutrons. Okay, so once again, when we look at our symbols in the periodic table, we see these table entries. We see the atomic number, the chemical symbol, the element name, and the average atomic mass. Uh, other periodic tables, especially when you get into high school, add more information. But for the basics of each one, this is the stuff you need to know. So here you go. Uh, this is a periodic table. And so to sum up the lesson, Dmitry Mendeleev found that uh, if you arrange the known elements by atomic number or the number of protons, you find that they have repeating patterns. And so that's why we have the periodic table. Uh, the horizontal rows are called periods. There are seven of them. There's 18 uh, groups, which are vertical columns. Uh, and within each periodic table entry, we'll have the atomic mass, the atomic number, the chemical symbol, and the name of it. And we'll talk about uh, the different colorings in this periodic table in the next lesson when we actually look at the elements. So there you go. Uh, that's the lesson. If it is always, if you have any questions, please let me know. And thanks for watching.